guys, this happened earlier and is extremely important. We have Tory MP Desmond Swain once again calling out his own government's lies, insanity and her stupidity. In fact, it's that good, I almost couldn't believe it when I first watched the clip. He points out the contradictory nonsense people like Matt Hancock and Nadine Doris are coming out with, their fear-mongering campaign against the British people and finally the amount of voters contacting MPs tearing holes in the government's claims. You even see Steve Baker behind him absolutely loving this orbital bombardment of facts by Desmond Swain on the soy-infused toss pot Matt Hancock, who unfortunately is not in the room. But if ever you hear anyone supporting the government narrative in future, you can show them this clip I am about to show you and ask them why a Tory MP has joined everyone else saying this about his own government if it's not true. So let's take a quick look at the clip itself. Desmond Swain. Okay, if you were to ask a scientist, how do you stop a virus that spreads through human contact. Do not be surprised if he answers telling you that you must stop human contact as far as possible. It falls to us, however, to decide whether the price is worth paying in terms of the misery and unemployment that it generates. A generation marred in their life chances, mind-boggling borrowing that we will have to repay over years, which will diminish proper investment in public services and industry. All that, and for what? The Secretary of State has told us this week that the average number of deaths is consistent with the long-term average for this time of year. 1,600 people die every day, but COVID is by no means chief amongst their killers. And it's no good to say that, well, every other jurisdiction in the world is following basically the same policy. That would strike me as herd stupidity. And speaking of herds, I understand that a number of ministers have questioned the existence of herd immunity, which is odd given that a successful vaccine uh, programme relies on herd immunity, and that is the basket into which the government has placed all its eggs. Throw into this mix, Madam Deputy Speaker, the fact that we appear to be determined to claim every possible death as a Covid death, as if we were in some sort of international league and competition. Add into it the failure to be absolutely upfront about the limitations of the PCR test as a means of tracking the disease. Add into that mix uh, the way that we use large numbers to terrify people. We've been told that intensive care units are at 80% of their capacity. Of course, at this time of year, that is exactly what you would expect them to have. No wonder our constituents are writing to us with ever greater conspiracy theories because our actions defy rational explanation. Now, hallelujah, the consensus has been broken. The Prime Minister has finally resisted the advice that he has been given by the scientists, just at a time that the opposition have embraced it with enthusiasm. Now at least an argument can be had and proper scrutiny and freedom from groupthink will arise. The danger is, if we do not change the way we respond to this disease, in years to come, historians will pick over how it was a prosperous society entered into such a devastating act of self-harm. Now, that was great, I think you would all agree. He was so clear and concise that even a Ramona could understand it, so I don't need to explain it. All we know is he literally destroyed every part of the government's narrative. It's a shame the media won't pick up on it though, thanks to Ofcom blocking their ability too. Yeah, that is also a thing, so maybe we need to let him know that if he doesn't already. Meaning, once again, it's on us wrong thinkers to share this around so people can see it, because we know the BBC certainly won't. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, 
the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.